Hey all, I, I hope you're doing well and, you know, making it through this difficult time of <laughs> remembering what day it is and getting through your schools and whatever it is that you're, you know, you're dealing with. I, I hope everything's going all right with you. I thought I would talk about the AP statistics exam this year. I, I, got, a, I got a couple of people asking about it, just like any tips on the AP statistics exam. It's not very different than um, for some of the other exams, but maybe some, some specific ideas or what I would be thinking about in pre preparation for the AP statistics format. Um, one of the things is to think about what kinds of questions you're looking at. And really the big difference this year, other than it's just very short or whatever, but there's no investigative task, there's, which is um, free response question number six on previous exams. So I would steer away from reviewing those other than reviewing material. But I would not look at those questions as a good practice for preparing for the kinds of free response questions you're going to get. The kinds of questions you're going to get are like similar to questions one through five on the AP statistics exam. So look at past free response questions, look at questions one through five, because those are the kinds of questions that uh, they will be asking on this exam. Um, the other thing I would be thinking about is making your own sheet of notes. I'm going to recommend this for all. I, I think any AP exam that you're doing that you have to uh, recall information, uh, even like US history or government, just some key ideas, is make a sheet of notes, a condensed set of notes, things that you can reference very quickly and very easily. Okay. Here are some things you might want to include on your own sheet of notes. Okay, You want to know all the hypothesis tests that you have to run, as well as, and, and this is something I forget when I do the videos and I, I forget, is all of the conditions that are necessary to run um, the hypothesis test. So for example, when you do a one sample Z test, right? Um, when do I use Z? When do I use T? What are the conditions that I need to use for the Z test versus the T test? Um, what are the conditions for a one sample proportion? What needs to be held true? Because the one sample proportion, right, is an approximation, the normal approximation to a binomial distribution. And so I need to have a certain, you know, sample size to do that, right? The NP greater than or equal to 10, N1 minus P greater than or equal to 10. Have all of those conditions listed out because when you run a hypothesis test, and I guarantee you will be asked to run one hypothesis test on one of the free response questions in some way you're going to be asked to identify and run a hypothesis test. You're definitely going to want to know what distinguishes them and what are the necessary conditions to apply the hypothesis tests. Okay, So think of your one sample z, one sample, um, sorry, the uh, one sample mean z and t, the one proportion z, the um, two independent um, samples, two dependent samples, or the matched pairs one, um, two independent proportions, you know, that kind of thing. Th th you know, all of those tests. You don't have to do chi-squared, right? Chi-squared has been eliminated, that kind of thing. Also make your own sheet of, like, for on your own, own um, sheet of notes, list your own formulas, how you like to write them. The formula sheet the AP Statistics gives you, I think, is a little confusing, and it leaves out some certain information. So your formulas for, like, confidence interval, even steps you would do to do, like, um, the critical value or the um, your p-values, like, all of the steps you can write out in some notes, like, hey, what calculator function should I be using? Um, in this case, okay. Um, the other thing is like common interpretations, how you interpret, because you're always going to interpret something. Like, um, it, what's the interpretation of a confidence level? What's the uh, interpretation of the confidence interval? What's the difference between level and interval in their interpretation? Standard deviation, things like that. Like, make sure you understand how you would write out. Like, what does when you're given a confidence level, what it, or a confidence interval, what does that mean? How do you write it into words? as to what that is. Um, some other things that you might want to include are definition. What's a type 1 error versus a type 2 error? It's easy to confuse and mix up. Um, what does it mean for two variables to be independent? You know, that sort of thing. Um, just make sure you're very clear on the definitions. You know, th this, is a, this is a good time to, as you're reviewing, as you're preparing for statistics, think about putting down the things that are key. Don't write everything down. Just think about the things that are like kind of important. And um, I know that's hard to do as you're studying it, but like 
things that are that might be useful for you when you're do when you're going through some of the FRQs and you're running into a thing that you're like, oh, I don't know that. Um, that maybe that's something that needs to go in my formula sheet, right? Um, so, like I said, keep it keep it pretty short. You know, try to keep it compact, not like tiny compact, but like keep it like well organized that it's easy to say like, okay, I know I know where to go in my sheet of notes because again, you have a short amount of time. 25 minutes for the first question, 15 minutes for the second question. Um, you don't want to be fumbling through binders and notes, pages and pages and pages of notes in your uh, notebooks. Okay. Um, and the last thing I would say is, even though they say you should be able to do everything with a four function calculator, a scientific calculator, or you don't need a graphing calculator for the exam, I suspect that you will still have to run some p-values and do some calculations and that some of you might be used to using your calculator for that because the the statistics exam while technically you don't need a graphing calculator they do have tables all the z tables and t tables and z tables and t tables are just um they're okay if you're good at using them, but I know some people have not learned how to use them. And when I do my free response questions uh, on my videos, uh, I tend to just use the calculator, like normal CDF, InVNORM, um, TCDF, MT, you know, those kinds of things, those calculator functions. So make sure you have your calculator ready. But keep in mind, you don't have to use your graphing calculator. You're, you're, you're allowed to use other things. Honestly, when I do statistical stuff, I prefer Excel. Um, I like to um, have a, a thing where I just enter in the values and it like spits it all out for me. Um, I wonder if I can show you real quick um, one that I've done when I when I'm checking answers of, for my for my students or helping them out. I don't like to type it in all into the calculator. I might have like a a spreadsheet like this where like this is doing confidence interval like a one sample mean, and I can put in the the um, I, I always mean to like uh, change this. But you see, I have like, I put in the field here what the sample mean is, what the sample standard deviation is, or actually that should be uh, population standard deviation, what N is, and then, um, you know, I'll pick a confidence level, and then it spits out the Z crit, the standard error, margin of error, lower bound, upper bound, you know, that kind of thing. That's the kind of thing that I like to do. Um, you know, I do it for one proportion, one sample mean, whatever. Use whatever tool you like to use in terms of these things um um like like uh, you don't definitely have to use what i use i just i like using excel i want to point out there is an interesting web calculator artofstat.com it's a little a little complicated because it's it's definitely geared toward more complex statistics some cases or more slightly more complex analysis in like a maybe college statistics class then then um so they'll have other things in there like an f test um, or um, analysis of variation and ANOVA testing, which is not on the AP statistics exam. But it is a pretty useful one. It's nice. I think it's like got some pretty cool um, features. It's called artofstat.com. But, you know, use whatever is like easiest for you to run. Like if you're used to using your TI calculator, have it ready. Just because they say you don't need it, still have it because chances are you're still going to need to run like normal PDF, normal CDF, that sort of thing. Okay. And so those are the kind of the basic ideas I would say for preparing for the exam. Those are those are my major tips. Um, you know, let me know um, if there's anything else you guys want to know about the exam. Um, I don't have any any students taking AP statistics this year. So I haven't been like as on top of like doing statistics stuff as much. I, I have several college students doing statistics in college, but uh, I don't have any I don't have any AP statistics students this year. So I haven't been like following it as closely, but um, yeah, just um, if there's anything I can help with or anything, just put in the comment below. I'll uh, try to get to it. And I hope you guys are doing okay. Stay safe, stay strong, you know, um, um, and, and good luck with everything.